Thank you so much, Peter. So let's get started. Okay. So building STEM with Minecraft. I'm Sarah Georgera. I'll be talking about gaming and education. Hi, I'm Cyrus, and what am I supposed to be talking about? Whatever you feel like uh, talking about. I'm talking about redstone stuff. Yeah, cool. Uh, so what do you see here? Big hole in the ground, right? So when I look at this, or at least when I first started, I got really scared. People never get scared, right? Only when they look at Minecraft things. So what do you feel when you look at this? A uh, giant hole and I want to jump in it. Right. <laughs> so excitement, right? Some excitement. So that's the thing. Games make us feel things. Uh, we feel things anyways, but sometimes they're not the things we want to feel. So sometimes we choose to play games to encourage us to feel the way we want to feel. And that can even be a very strong motivator. So games are something that you want to do. Who here wants to go to work on Monday morning? Sometimes, maybe. Not all the time. Sometimes games are the things that we need to get us out of bed or to go and make it another day. Jane McGonigal wrote a book called Reality is Broken. In the middle of it, she accidentally hit her head on a cupboard and got such a bad concussion that the doctors told her it would be at least a year, if not two years, before she'd be able to get back to her book, to be able to carry on with her life. She thought about that, and she decided, rather than give in to that, she was going to apply the lessons she had learned from writing that same book to help her get better. Because of that, now you can do the same thing. And I swear I'm not affiliated with this, but this is a game you can use called Super Better. She created it on pen and paper, and it got her through to the end of writing that book and beyond. So think about that for a moment. What could you do with that motivation that you get from playing games? Quite a lot, I would argue. So why do you play? Raise your hand if you play video games or any kind of game. I hope everyone in the room has their hand up right now, except for her. <laughs> games are fun. If you're bored, Games are a great way to get you back in, into your daily life. Games allow you to overcome loneliness, sometimes depression. When your day-to-day -day life isn't challenging you, sometimes you might go to a game. Is that bad? I don't know. But we do it, and that's not changing. So. Maybe games aren't a waste, but a resource. Maybe this feeling is OK. And maybe we need to bring it into other places, like that. So what if a game could be a teacher? What if a game could be school or classroom? Who here knows what this is? I love, I love getting people to raise their hands. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, call out. One of the people who, do you know what this is? You got it. Fitbit badges. So it's well understood that gamification can get us doing things that we don't normally do when it doesn't feel like other people are watching. The Fitbit is a great example of a company that realized that people want to do this. They want to feel good and get better. But sometimes they need a little push. They need someone else to know that they got up that morning at 5.30 and ran around the block or whatever it was. They need to know someone cares. And this is a way to do it. Gamification. So why not schools? 
why don't we bring quests and leveling and characters into the place where we need it most, where we need motivation the most? It's already being done on a small scale. Quest to Learn, charter school in New York City. This is game-based learning for 21st century competencies. What does that mean? So who here, and I don't expect anyone to raise their hand, who here has filled out a Scantron sheet lately at their work? Not a whole lot of people. Point being that there's a lot about day-to-day -day work that isn't taught in schools. We have to seek it out, and we need passion to do that, enthusiasm. Those are the energies that games are unleashing, and they should be unleashing in schools. But not everyone can go to a special charter school. Not everyone has access to the cutting edge, the trendy stuff. We need a tool that kids are already using. Because let's face it, who wants an adult to tell you it's time to go play and this is the thing you're doing? You want something kids choose to do and have been choosing for quite a long time. A tool that's already proven to be successful That's a lot of copies. That's a lot of kids already playing a little game called Minecraft. For DevOps, I would say, too, DevOps engineers like me, there's something special about Minecraft, even from a deployment perspective. Who here has deployed a World of Warcraft server? Yeah, no, it doesn't happen. But at least two people in this room have deployed a Minecraft server. No other game is going to let you practice some of the skills that are very relevant to today's engineering, to the cutting edge. And we'll be talking about Docker and Ansible and how those tools allowed Cyrus and I to play Minecraft together over a network. So Minecraft for DevOps. I'm going to do a little shout out here. Minecon. September. If you act now, you could wait in line. <laughs> it's already sold out. Point being, look at the energy there. Look at the energy in this room. I mean, given we're very energetic anyways. But people get really, really excited about games, and Minecraft is a star of the games. This community is very excited about Minecraft. And that energy goes right back into mods, into events like this, into tutorials, into videos, into wikis. Think of all the content that kids, like Cyrus, have created. And Cyrus himself, you, who, who taught you the things in those note cards right there? My mom. She taught you how to play Minecraft? No. Who taught you the things in your note cards? Um, people on YouTube. There you go. So point being that her, his mom, my sister, wouldn't be able to teach Cyrus. And he wouldn't want to learn from her. He wanted to learn it himself because he was interested. The Kano board, Raspberry Pi. Super cool, super recommend this for all those people who have kids who are very into Minecraft and would like to learn on their own. So Cyrus, uh, how old is the Minecraft on this board? Really old. Really old. How old, like, compared to how old you are? Uh, about five years old. Five years old? So. Practically when he was born. <laughs> Point being, this computer has Minecraft for Education on it. It's already being done. Minecraft is very well adapted for education. 
to the point where businesses are being made around it. So now let's get into this a little bit. All right, so raise your hands again. So who here is a Docker nerd? Docker, Docker. Ansible, you keep your hands up if, they're, if that's awesome. Minecraft server image, courtesy of Jeff Bourne in Texas. Think again about that community that we saw in the Mine, Minecon event. That's the energy that takes to create open source software. That's the energy we need in order to improve our tools, get better, build on each other's work, and collaborate. You can check this out, clone that repo, stem Minecraft, and roll your own. In fact, I encourage you to do so. DigitalOcean, pay version, I'm working on EC2 support. Got a little busy. So this will spool up a DigitalOcean droplet, then use Ansible to spool up the Docker container. Roll your very own Minecraft server, start playing. Learn more about the underlying technologies and get passionate, get excited to do it and to get DevOps working for gaming rather than the other way around. So this screencast is in GIF format here. Feel free to download the slides. It'll take you through the whole process of how to create your own Minecraft server. And at the end, Use your Minecraft client to connect, and then get your kids excited to work with you, to play with you, and to develop STEM skills that will help them become engineers or not. Whatever they feel like they're passionate about, let them do that. Without further ado, Cyrus, you're up. Hello, my name is Cyrus, and I'm nine years old. I've been playing video games since I was two. Redstone is a Minecraft material you can use to power a conduit. You can use redstone to power lamps, pistons, dispensers, and other things. The problem with redstone is that it can only stretch 15 blocks, then it runs out of power. I can fix this problem by using a special block. The special block I can use to work with redstone is a repeater. It boosts the redstone power, repeating it another 15 blocks. The repeater has a lever with four settings called ticks. The first tick powers the redstone the fastest, the second is medium fast, the third is medium slow, the fourth tick is the slowest. A piston is a Minecraft tool to move materials forward one block. Sticky pistons, the one with green on top, have the extra ability to move something forward and backward. Pistons are used to handle fragile materials like glass and are another important item powered by redstone. Thank you for listening. If you have any Minecraft questions, I can answer them at the end of the presentation. <laughs> Cyrus Suskowski, everyone. So I'll leave you with one thought. At the beginning, what did we see? Hole in the ground. That was in our imagination. This is not in our imagination. This is a kid built a computer, working computer, in the imaginary world of Minecraft. That knowledge is the kind of knowledge you want, and it's the kind of passion we all want to rediscover or to discover again in gaming. Thank you. Great question. So the question was, what would you say is the, the right age group to start? Cyrus, do you have an opinion on that? Five. Five? So the question would be, do they want to do it? If you put them in front of it and they say, great, let me go, then I'd say they're ready. Legos are another great alternative. Some kids want to be in the real world. Let them do it if they want. I'd say five 
It is a great ballpark. Mm. So the question is, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you get kids in games, sometimes the focus is lost, would you say? So how do we make sure kids in games are focusing on things that aren't detracting from the real world? Is that about what you're saying? Okay. So great question, and that's actually something that uh, Reality is Broken, that book I was talking about, uh, talks a lot about. So like any tool, games can obviously be forces for good or forces for not so good in our lives. That's actually a principle that game developers themselves have learned. And a lot of game developers have developed expertise in understanding sustainable gaming. So sustainable gaming, and this applies to Minecraft and to other games, means understanding that your audience has a limited attention span. And in fact, you should enforce limits on their attention span. Because let's face it, it's like gambling. If you're in a uh, Las Vegas casino for too long, you're gonna lose all your money. Same kind of thing applies to video games. You don't want to waste, you don't want to spend so much time that you do start wasting intellectual capital. Because it's not sustainable for you, it's not sustainable for the game and for the game company. So I'd say it is a personal thing, but games themselves are getting better at putting guidelines and rails in place so the players understand and know that's time to log out and get back to the real world. For Minecraft specifically, do you have any recommendations on how to get kids to go out and play? Um, just tell them they have a certain time left. I think we have other people in the audience who might be experts about telling people when they should stop playing Minecraft. So, what do we got? Sure, so uh, there's actually a video um, uh, on YouTube. Uh, I don't think I did actually include the link, but I could send it out afterwards, about how schools are currently using Minecraft in education. Great point. So Minecraft already has an education edition, which schools are using. It does become difficult for teachers to be able to balance the computer time, which feels you know, less curriculum-y and the other time, the other kind. However, one of the approaches they have is to create lessons within Minecraft. So I can't speak to adoption because I don't have the facts in front of me. However, one of the approaches that they've taken with Minecraft for Education is to build those lessons in Minecraft worlds. So if you have history you want to teach, Greek or Roman architecture, go into your world, create an ionic column. So point being that Minecraft is extremely flexible and can actually augment curriculums. However, I haven't seen any completely Minecrafted school. The quest to learn is as close as we get today to having a completely gamified school. Sure. So uh, the question was, so, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Minecraft, should Minecraft be a primary tool or is it part of a tool set? Okay. Great question again. I'd say Minecraft is very adaptable and flexible, but you're correct that there are other tools uh, that can complement Minecraft. Obviously, any classroom is going to be uh, determined by the teacher my recommendation would be to complement Minecraft with other technical gaming engines. Uh, there's one in particular, um, I'm getting a, what's the one where you have the drag and drop things? Drag and drop things? No. It starts with an S, I'll have, to th I'll have to come up with it later. But there's definitely, there's a coding engine, and the name escapes my mind right now. Probably someone in the, Scratch. Thank you, Peter, yes. Uh, Scratch. I'd say is a fantastic thing to pair with Minecraft. To the point where um, the Kano actually already comes pre-baked 
with Scratch integrated into Minecraft. For those who don't know, Scratch is a coding engine that's graphical in the sense that you can take logic blocks and use them like you would Legos. So certain code blocks fit together better. Conditionals, loops will only fit in the GUI with things that complement them. So I'd say that, among other tools, there are probably other tools that I don't know about, but those kinds of tools get kids immersed even more in those worlds. Uh, very good point. Mm. Yeah, sure. Um, so not that specifically that I know of, although I'm sure, so there are certain servers dedicated to different things, um, which come in and out of existence. There are certain servers I've seen that are dedicated to learning a foreign language. You could learn French on a Minecraft server, things like that, yeah. Um, but I would say the coolest things happening are the ones that the kids are organizing themselves. So has anyone here heard of Hunger Games for Minecraft? So a couple of people, but not many. Hunger Games, and this is brilliant in my opinion. So people are generally familiar with Hunger Games in general, where Few players compete for limited resources to survive. So translates and adapts extremely well to Minecraft because you can set this up where people can kill each other in game and have a last one standing. Again, organized by the kids. This didn't come top down. And I'd say that's one of the, the hallmarks of a really good game in general and a great Minecraft adaptation. This is from the kids. And the winner, the global winner, was a 12-year-old from Providence, Rochambeau Library, Hunger Games. All right, time for one last question. Go ahead. No. Could that be a suggestion? No. <laughs> I think we have it. Thank you so much, guys. Yep. Cyrus? Bye. 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 <laughs>